Hey everybody, good morning. Well, I guess it's still morning. At least here it is. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Wanted to kind of go over a little bit of things on how to do this door. I know everybody has questions. So again, if I don't cover something, feel free to just PM me and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Again, I wanted to stress the transfers. This is the transfer. It's a redesign. I love redesign. This is a transfer and that's what the transfer would look like if I were to put it on one big piece of furniture, like one big thing. That's what it would look like, which would look beautiful. But again, I painstakingly cut out every piece because I wanted to do something different and I wanted to add other things to it too. I know this was supposed to be like Chicago bridge or some kind of thing from wherever years ago. But what I wanted to do was make it into more of a Roman feel, like a gladiator meets Spartacus kind of thing. That's Da Vinci's architecture kind of thing too. I was trying to get that feel for it. So that's the closest I could come so far. This right here is a lace transfer. I will tell you about lace transfers. As you can tell, this has a tan background, or a beige background, tan background, and a black background. Lace transfers, unless you specifically look for lace that has a transparent background, that is the background color. So your color of your paint, if you want it to show through, will not show through. It will be solid or it will be muted. So a lace transfer usually looks like this. So if you want your paint to show through, look for one with a transparent background. Just a little tidbit because I actually kind of screwed one up one time. Um, <laughs> anyway, I will also go over again. Remember, never give up or never count out the little cheapy ones you can get at Dollar Tree. Um, I use these. Again, I'll see something like, I don't know that I would use hardly any of those, but I liked this little thing. I like this bottle and I like this. So I can use these on another project. Again, if you'll look really close, I needed gold flowers for that pillar. That was these. So they were perfect for this project. And this came in black and gold at the dollar store. So I always buy them. I'll kind of show you. I buy a whole bunch of them just for projects. Like I thought, oh, there's some cool things there I'm sure I can use. And then again, I keep a big folder. This has everything that I cut up from other projects. Uh, I just shove them all in here. I mean, there's a ton of little tiny baby ones down there. Again, I buy them, I chop them up. This one also will have a few things from this redesign. I'm actually going to do another project. I think this looks really cool, but I like the numbers and things out of it. So I chopped this one up and I haven't used it yet, but I wanted to show you. This one also, some of these things on the door will look really familiar because it has pieces from here on it, just because I think it really works. So if you see that little piece right there at the top, I think that's the piece that I used right there. Look, look at that. I think that's it, see? So you can literally use things in other projects. It's just a matter of placement. And I know I say that a lot. Something I did do different on this door that I have never done before because I've never been a big fan is stickers. I don't use stickers because stickers are torture and they never lay flush and I just don't like them. So what I did was, I saw these amazing stickers at the Dollar Tree. Look how cool they are. So what I did was, I thought they kind of reminded me of like a Roman medallion kind of look. So what I did was, I took that sticker off the back and then I spray painted it the same color gold. So then I used the a Gorilla Spray Adhesive. Oh look, I painted that one black so it would show up. But from far away, it kind of looks like Roman medallion kind of stuff. When you buy those stickers, and I don't suggest stickers on any door. I'm just going to tell you that right now because they usually do not do well. So we'll see how they do. But if you ever need to adhere anything, Gorilla Spray Adhesive, this is the stuff to work with. It's amazing and it sticks pretty quick. I also added one down here too. I just thought it looked cool. So this will be the first time we'll see how they hold up when I seal it. Like I said, it'll be the first time that I'm using it on something that 
I really want to. I have used stickers before, but it was, you know, doing something for my kids and we really weren't going for, you know, a specific look. <laughs> Anyway, so that's my that's my view on stickers. Uh, the lace, I wanted to show you. So I cut out the lace, and I even have tons of little pieces. As you can see, I've been using this little tiny piece. I cut out the lace, and that's what I've been making, like the little, uh, to give it the vintage Roman uh, fallen block kind of Colosseum look. I know that sounds kind of like a weird description, but that's what I've been doing with it. Adding pieces here, pieces here, just giving it, you know, just those little touches on the edges. And it's not, again, I, lace I love to use to do this kind of work because you can literally put it on there any which way and it looks cool. You don't have to be an artist to do this. See how I've added it to corners here. And then I literally made like an entire little flower pot out of it because this was an extra old piece and this were a whole bunch. So see, this was the last piece of a row. So I just made like a little flower pot out of it. Again, you don't throw away any pieces at all. Like literally keep every little piece. You never know when you'll need a tiny little piece. Last but not least, I guess not last but not least, <laughs> the paint. So the entire door, I painted the gold spots first. I used a uh, acrylic, an acrylic gold, and I just painted splotches, like just painted across. Just painted across these spots right here because I knew that I didn't want an entire gold door because I knew that these were gold. And I knew that I didn't want an entire black door because I needed a little more character than that. One solid color is just kind of blah to me. But again, you can do a lot with even one color. So it's all on personal choice. So what I did was I painted the gold and all the spots, see where the gold is. So then when that dried, I came back in and I painted with my chalk paint. The chalk paint, again, I use this big daddy brush. You don't have to, but it's really great for big spots. So I painted the whole rest of the door in black, black chalk paint. Make sure when you're painting that you do all of these first. All, if you have a door that has insets, do those first, paint all those first, and then come back and paint the rest of the door. So when I had the paint on my brush, and I don't know if anybody's ever told you, but when you're using chalk paint, you should mist your brush like every few minutes. Anytime you feel a drag, because chalk paint should go on nice and smooth. Anytime you hear this and you hear that, it's too dry. So you need to mist it. Get you a misting bottle from the beauty supply store. Not a spray bottle, but a mister bottle. There's a difference. You mist your bottle and then you get perfect coverage like with any chalk paint. It's really awesome. So... When you get to up here, you just kind of stop where the color, where you want to blend colors. You just stop. You don't have to do any feathering or anything. Then you wait a little bit. When it is still damp, not totally dry, you just take a different dry brush, not the same brush you used, and you just dry brush it. You just, you just, you just feather it up. That's how you do it. You just want to feather it anywhere the ones are meeting. And you just go like that. Like literally just feather it. Now I will tell you, I wanted a little bit more, see how I have like the faded look? I wanted that faded look to give me uh, the old world look. That, that's really the best description. So you're gonna think this is the crazy part, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. And then all of a sudden I thought, well that's what overspray when you use spray paint looks like, like when you mess up, but that's what I wanted it to look like. So. Yes, there is spray paint on this door. Look, Rust-Oleum metallic finish in this gold. And it is absolutely awesome. Like seriously, buy this little wonderful gadget. It's like 11 bucks and literally you can spray paint like a pro. And you're not killing yourself with this. You would literally, what I did was because I wanted that overspray. See that overspray right there? So I literally held this a piece of cardboard, just a piece of cardboard I cut out. I cut boxes up every time I get Amazon. <laughs> and I hold it like this, lightly spray. So see how I have a light spray? But you get that after spray, or you get the overspray that hits the edge of the cardboard, and it feathers it up. 
So see how it feathered it up? So you'll be able to see this a lot more when it is hung. I'm still gonna add, I think, some gilding wax today, which will give me some more highlights, you know, to do some areas like right here. I don't know what that is. Some little areas in here, just to give it a little more look, um, the give it a little more aged look. And then hopefully I'll be able to seal it. Then I'm gonna seal it with poly acrylic because it's an interior door. It's my husband's door. So I'm gonna seal it with a poly acrylic and then what I'm going to do is wax it when the poly has dried. I'm probably only going to put one layer of poly on it because I'm going to wax it too. So I really don't think I'd need two layers. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'll know after the first coat. So if you have any questions, just PM me. I think I've tried to cover everything. But again, PM me if you have any questions. And have a great weekend.